So we're on the Holberg Rassi stand and this behind me is the new 40C. And we are gonna have a good look at how the modern hull shape, still Frere's design, but the modern hull shape that takes beam right the way aft, while still giving plenty of body in the hull shape, buys an incredible amount of volume together with the straight ends for a 40 foot cruising yacht. And if we head towards the stand now, hopefully we might even get Magnus Rassi to take us around. So here's the aft end of the Harbour Rassi 40 and here is Magnus. Magnus, can you take us on board and show us some of the features, especially that the modern hull shape can help buy you in a 40 foot cruising yacht now? Of course, please follow me. This is a new model, Halbasi 40C, and it's 40 foot in the hull length. And traditionally we are so used to comparing boats by hull length in foot, and we think 40 foot. But here we have a hull of 40 foot and a waterline that is close to 40 foot. And it was not many years ago that 40 foot waterline was a 46 footer. So no wonder there is a lot of room here and it's a fast boat as well. So yeah, you get the benefit of both the volume and the speed. Yeah. yeah. And in terms of comparing it to, I mean, one of the latest models you have before is the 44. Um, uh -huh. I think the cockpit space is pretty similar. Yeah, it's exactly the same, same dimensions in the cockpit on the 40C as on the 44, and even larger than the current 48 footer. Okay. So it does wow. make makes wonderful for volume in the boat and storage as well. And the cockpit is quite deep with quite high combings because inside the boat we don't walk with the head below the seating area but in the cockpit combing so it's win-win-win you get a deeper cockpit you get a higher combing and you get a fuller headroom inside okay and it looks like you get a nice big wheel center cockpit so um what about in terms of compared to the 44 which is aft helms yeah in terms of the actual performance of the boat, are you still getting the feeling on the helm? Really, really. It's the best sailboat we have ever built at Halbrasi. It's a very precise feeling in the helm. You feel every shift in the wind, every wave. It's a really precise and very good contact with, with the sailing. And that's so important. And that's what a combination of the twin rudders and the steering linkage, I guess. Yeah, steering linkage, good bearings. Um, a thorough good installation that is very precise and a good design of course and talk us for a few few of the features you like on the deck and the cockpit yeah it's a very clean and uncluttered layout we have separated the top shrines that you don't see here on the boat show yeah the mast, uh, but you see the lowers it's an easy passage between uh, the top shrouds and the lowers it's easy to sheath the held sail and it's a widespread base, which is good for stability of the mast. Looks like an easy boat to walk around as well, the deck yes. as well. Wide side decks. Yeah. You have control lines to the cockpit that's new for this size of boat. You have controls of out hall, of main halyard, of the bang, of light wind uh, halyard. You control that all from here in the cockpit. That's a big plus as well. And you have a bin for excess ropes. So you get rid of that, so you mm -hmm. get a, a clean and uncluttered deck so the, here as well. So you've got the, both the shore power and, and sheet tails coming in here. Yes, okay. exactly. Inside here. I noticed the push buttons there, so uh, it's, I, I think modern Holberg Rassi owners are now going very much push button, yeah? Yes, absolutely. It's a part of the concept. Yeah. Effortless sailing, push button control of everything. Easy to handle the sails, to pull it in, pull it out, to sheet them, to adjust them, to trim them, all by push-button operation. Okay, and typically in mast yes. furling as well. Yes. Yeah, so you have the good easy access up the side decks and integrated bowsprit as well. Integrated bowsprit, it's not a retrofit, it's a part of the hull and the deck. And with its bulb nose, you have a good installation for a lightning sail, you have a good installation for anchor, mm -hmm. and you can also attach a good bow ladder as well. 
Uh, what also contributes to the clean deck layout is that the jib furler uh, has an under deck drum with under deck electric motor. You have even the windlass is below decks. Yeah, so you keep a very flush deck. Yeah, yeah. all the deck hatches are flush mounted okay. to the deck. The control lines are hidden below the deck. Should we have a look at the, uh, the cockpit and down below as well? Yes, let's do so. So a nice step up into the cockpit and you still get a very deep protected area both from where to sit and uh, and from behind the helm as well. And the helm station is a bit higher up so you stand a bit higher up so you have good visibility forward over the spray hood and also the seat is a bit higher and that's good for outside mm -hmm. and it's good for inside because it gives you more space inside and still you have a proper good combing all around the headsman. Yeah. And a traveller still this size. Yeah. In terms of storage on deck, you've got the quarter lockers. You've got gas locker there. You've got the tail locker and shore power, and a bed, cockpit, shallow cockpit bench locker. And if you have the, the biggest galley, if okay. you have the yeah. normal galley, you have a huge deck locker. Okay. And then you have a, a deck locker in front as well, above the chain, which is big enough for all the fenders and mooring lights. And here the washboards. Just push like that and then it's on the gas spring. Very smart. And then moving down below into a beautifully finished European oak two cabin version. And, and Magnus, what are the layout options you can have on this? Here we have uh, the armchair option. You can also have uh, a traditional straight CT. You can have a normal size uh, galley or the normal galley as yes, we have it here. In the aft cabin you can have a center line berth or two separate berths. Okay. So um, this is the enormous galley version. Yeah. So yeah, look at that. Amazing for a 40 and foot yacht. And that comes because we have turned the main engine 180 degrees. Okay. And that allows space for the generator in front of the main engine instead of at side and that creates so much more space for the galley area as well as the beam of the hull. yes yeah, yeah, otherwise yeah. you would have the generator space there and not the space for, for the galley and one thing more that we have made differently here is that traditionally the hull stiffer has been below the sole level only mm -hmm. now we have pulled that up all the way up to the deck Okay. Yeah. On both sides. Yeah, and yeah. that stiffens up the boat. So you get torsionally stiff. Instead of having those bulkheads that go up like like this and create a part of the structural in integrity of the boat. Uh, with this stiffener we can lower everything down. Here between the saloon and the work table. And between the saloon and the galley. And it opens up the whole boat. It like, it's like a big open flat. It's a completely different space feeling. It is a big boat to start with, but this uh, ex contributes to the extra feel of extra space even further. And as uh, I guess you don't see it so much in an indoor boat show, but there's so much natural light. Yeah, both into a lot of natural now. light and indirect LED light everywhere as well. Yeah, even up here you have indirect uh, LED light. I and love these deep fiddles around as well. Yeah. It feels Molded into the wood. way that you can use them some as as a handhold as well. Yeah. And it's also the way to to fasten this uh, glass piece between the sinks and the, the armchair instead of having big visible fittings. Mm -hmm. And a nice glass locker between the armchairs with Swedish crystal glass. So then we have a, a the chart table in all the layouts. You keep the chart table. Yeah. I call and a nice it rather passageway a work table well. rather yeah. than the chart table today. The top opening fridge and freezer here mm -hmm. in the walkthrough. So you have actually three fridges in the boat totally. And a wet locker directly at the entrance. Well ventilated. You do have to keep reminding yourself it's only in 40 feet. Yeah. Electrics cupboard as well. And uh, yeah, walk-in engine room, yeah? Yes. Still. 
Oh, we don't have the light on here. So, no. Amazing. So there's the space for the gen set ahead yep. of the engine. Yeah. So we still have what six feet headroom in here. This I, I oh, cannot think. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but it, it's, in meters, it's really then. good headroom. Yeah. And wide, spacious, lots of natural light. Yeah. Wide bed, with permanent side leak glass in the way here with with those pe wooden panel. And a nice seat here, and a work table on the other side, makeup table. And what what is the max beam on this boat? It's four eighteen. Four eighteen, and that's taken from midships all the way after. I believe. Almost. Yeah. So if you measure it at the transom, it's even wider than the forty four that was considered really, really wide when when that was introduced just a few years ago. And moving forward, it's a so it's a two cabin, one heads layout. And you have this sort of corridor effect where you can still get privacy into the forward cabin exactly. and heads in here, head shower area and a washing machine. So there's a plexiglass door here that separates off the shower area from the heads and then there is a separate door that closes into the V cab, the forward cabin itself. And again, there's the, the whole shape's paid a benefit here, isn't it? Absolutely. Look at the foot end. It's really, really wide. And look at the hull side. It's almost vertical. Mm -hmm. And that makes it possible to have a wide bed, even though you can lower the bed and get an easy instep. And hull port lights also in the hull here. In Big the port cabin. lights, yeah. So you see what's happening outside the boat. You have contact with the, with the world outside in a completely different way. I like the way this stowage wherever you can get it as well yeah and there's a big um, wardrobes there as well aren't they where you're yeah. standing also here you have one hanging locker mm -hmm. and you have one with shelves like this and all the panels when we cut out something for a door here we label it so it comes back to the same place so the grain is matching the whole way through the whole boat and you have invisible hinges with built-in end stoppers so it cannot damage the rest of the boat and you have built-in ventilation and automatic lights and in terms of the actual joiner work this yeah we said this is oak and you can still have the traditional mahogany yes. here we have samples of the traditional mahogany okay. and you can also get teak interior but this is, I presume, is the most popular, yeah? Yes. So far, everybody uh, who ordered a boat like this uh, gone for, for a European oak, which is brighter. We've got a lot of boat here for 40 feet. How much, how much is it? In, I know you're going to tell me in Krona, but yeah, <laughs> roughly in German Euros. Boat show. So here it is, 467,000 euros, including German VAT. Okay. For a sail away boat, yeah, which means you can really sail away with it. It's with sails, with launching and rigging and anti fouling, and you can really use the boat for that price. Okay, and then one last question what's coming up later this year? We are coming up with a new 50 footer, okay, and same sort of hull shape. Yes, it reminds a lot, but each new design is a completely new design. Uh, we will have the first boat under construction in August at the Open Yard Weekend in Elos at the August, uh, the 21st to 23rd of August. And uh, we will have a finished boat on this show next year. Excellent. Magnus, thank you very much. You're welcome.